Everybody's got their favorite game. Uh, sometimes it's RPGs like Final Fantasy, staples like Legend of Zelda. Sometimes it's old classic first-person shooters like Doom or Wolfenstein or uh, Quake. Any kind of the id software games were always really good. Maybe it's horror games like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, or System Shock. Depending on the genre, you can always find a fan favorite or sometimes a game that's a little bit more obscure. But to you, it was the best example of that game on that system system at that time. Now, the system that I remember fondly, the most fondly, because I grew up with it when I was a little kid, was the Nintendo 64. And whenever people hear Nintendo 64, the first game they normally think of is Legend of Zelda. And when they think of the best shooter on the system, they think of Goldeneye. But for me, the best game on that system, bar none, it was a first-person shooter, but it wasn't Goldeneye. Funny enough, though, it was made by Rare Software, and that game was Perfect Dark. Now, you might remember that game as being remade, I believe it was on the Xbox 360? I think that was it. It was a prequel to the Perfect Dark N64 shooter, and it may have gotten an HD remaster, I can't quite recall. I know they did something in mod, I think like Source, Perfect Dark Source, something like that. Anyway, I'm getting away from the point here, as I so often do. Perfect Dark was the perfect first-person shooter on, their, on the Nintendo 64. In a lot of ways, it was much, much better than GoldenEye and improved on everything that GoldenEye had done, which some people might hear that and be like, sacrilege, but it's true. In a lot of ways, it was the perfect sequel to a game that it wasn't even a sequel of. It didn't have any connection to James Bond apart from like a couple of Easter eggs, but in terms of continuity or storyline, it was its own beast altogether. But it did a lot of things really well. The story was kind of, it was okay. It, it went from being a sort of Blade Runner-esque uh, corporate espionage spy scenario to quickly evolving, or depending on how you look at it, devolving into a intergalactic, interstellar alien space war between the traditional gray men that you know from, like, you know, abduction videos in Area 51, to uh, the sort of raptor hammerhead hybrid looking bipedal alien lizards with grinder machine guns and uh, rocket staffs. It, it, it got weird fast and you ended up going to an alien world, but it was interesting. It brought a lot of sort of conspiracies together in this giant, messy, beautiful hodgepodge of a story. But the core mechanics of the game and the multiplayer were some of the best that I'd ever seen and have ever seen actually to this date. One of the things it did really well and that I always love is giving you versatility and more than one option to a problem in terms of first person shooter combat. A lot of times in a game you'll have a weapon, like let's just take a pistol as an example, where it's a pistol. That's all it does. You can shoot with it. And sometimes there's modifications and sometimes it might have a secondary firing option. But beyond that, if you run out of ammo with the pistol, you're done. Now, this wasn't true for all of the guns, but for most of the handguns in Perfect Dark, the secondary option for it was a pistol whip, which was really simple. But if you wanted to conserve ammo or if you didn't have any ammo left, that was the most viable option you had. And hand-to-hand -hand combat, oh man, hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was the best because it wasn't just about punching the other guy. It made sense. You could just judo chop or punch a guy in the face, but even hand-to-hand -hand combat had a secondary function. You could rear back and upper deck somebody in the nose, or you could switch over to disarm and literally did what it sounded like. If they were holding a gun and you got off a hit on them, you knocked the gun out of their hands. So imagine if somebody's staring you down with the golden gun. If they hit you, you're dead. But you manage to get off one punch before they can click the trigger, you've knocked the golden gun out of their hands. And now... It gets interesting. There's either going to be a mad scramble for the gun to see who gets it first, and you might have a wash, rinse, repeat scenario, or one of you whips out a gun faster than the other, and it's game over for somebody. Or maybe you cross counter each other. That can happen too. Every single gun had a different option. Some of my favorites were one, which was an assault rifle called the Dragon. It was just a standard assault rifle, but its secondary option was a proximity bomb mode, which was... I've never seen another gun... I've never seen another gun alt fire in a game that did this. And I'm kind of surprised because especially for multiplayer, it was so ingenious. So follow me on this. You go into a room, the dragon's lying on the ground. You pick it up. But if you recall, it's got a proximity bomb setting. So what do you do? Well, if you feel like being sneaky, you drop it exactly where you found it in proximity mode. Because when you do that, for all intents and purposes on the ground, it just looks like a gun. 
nobody coming into the room is going to think off the hand this might be an explosive device. So when they run over to pick up a free weapon, it blows up in their face. One kill on the scoreboard for you. And I did that a lot. And you would be surprised how many times you can get somebody with that trick. Then it becomes interesting because they won't trust any gun they see when they go into a room, even if it's not the dragon. If they don't know the game well enough, they're going to start second-guessing themselves. Another gun that I really liked was the laptop gun. And again, it was an unassuming SMG machine gun. It fired pretty fast. It was pretty accurate. As a gun, it was great. But its secondary option is what made it really interesting. It went into laptop mode, which literally, the gun was sort of this sleek, square, Tron-looking submachine gun. And when you put it into laptop mode, it folded into a small kind of cube that you could throw onto a wall, which would then deploy a turret. And it became an automated defense system. If anybody but you came anywhere near that thing, it opened up on them. And if you think about it, a lot of times in life and in games, People don't look up. When they enter a room, they will scan it. They might check their corners. They might check their six, you know, clear properly, be tactical and all that. But it's very rare that people look up. In fact, the first time that was pointed out to me was when I was watching the movie Predator with my dad back in the day. He's like, you know, it kind of makes sense that he got the jump on them all that time. Like, why is that? He's like, they really didn't look up that often and he was hiding in the trees. But you know what? People often don't think to look directly above them. And I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. And funny enough, I actually applied that tactic in Perfect Dark. I take the laptop gun, go into a room, throw it directly on the roof if possible or as high as I could. People would enter the room not thinking anything. All of a sudden, they're getting hit with bullets, and they're looking left, right, and behind them. They can't figure it out. And then just as they die and the camera pans up, they see a turret on the roof, and they're like, ah, shit. But that was the clever part of that gun. You could literally stick it anywhere there was a surface. And then there were other guns, like, uh, well, the Farsight had a... <laughs> it was the cheapest gun in the game. It could fire through surfaces, and it was pretty much a one-hit kill. It was the Golden Gun with a caveat. In that, the golden gun, you got to see what you're shooting at. The far sight, you can look down the scope and you see through walls, and its alternate fire was a target tracking mode, so it was kind of bullshit. But there were examples of other guns like that. The hand grenade, for example. A simple explosive device. You throw it, it blows up. Pretty, you know, simple. But its alternate mode was my favorite, ping pong mode. You threw it, it bounced. A lot. I think it went on for like a solid, maybe like I'd say 10 seconds before it exploded. But think about this. If you find a contained room that you know is like a main artery on the map and people are going to have to pass through there at some point or are very likely to, you open up the door, you throw three well-placed ping pong grenades in there and shut it quick so they don't come back and hit you in the face because they will do that. You've got a room that is a death trap. And the moment somebody opens that door, they're pretty much screwed. Ah, geez, I'm trying to think of other examples from that game, and I'm really highlighting the weapons, but that's what I loved about playing against somebody, because they were really good with one gun. There was always something out there that had a secondary mode that would trump that. You were never boxed into a corner where someone having one kind of weapon meant they owned the map. I mean, they could own the map just by skill and luck, but having that weapon and the one thing it could do didn't make it the end-all be-all. Yeah, there were so many other examples, but the other great part of it was the multiplayer angle in that you could customize your person literally from their head down to their feet. So you could have somebody with the body of an alien gray man and the head of somebody who, you know, you just shouldn't have a full grown person's head on a like a like a baby's body is essentially what it was. It looked disturbing, but it was kind of funny. And also the bots. There were bots with different personalities, which at the time was something that you really hadn't seen a whole lot of. So if you wanted just a straight up challenge, you could ratchet up the difficulty on Sims that would just fight you like any other person. The Dark Sims were the worst. They were the best, and they would kick the crap out of you repeatedly. They were frustratingly accurate, they were damn hard to hit, and they did not suffer fools. You couldn't kill them the same way twice, they just wouldn't put up for it. And if you could, kudos, you were a boss player. But you could also have sims with different kinds of personalities. There was a revenge one, which would go after the last person who killed it. There was a coward one, and he would just run. That's all he would do. His only modus operandi was to stay the hell away from whoever was trying to hurt him. So he'd book it. One of my favorites, because he was... He was a subtle dick. 
He didn't mean to be, but he was just by virtue of his function, which was the pacifist sim. And all he would do was run around the map looking for people with guns. And if you had a gun, he would run up to you, punch you with the disarm option on the melee combat, and knock the gun out of your hands and take it away. He wouldn't use it against you. He wouldn't shoot anybody. He would just go around disarming people because he didn't want anybody to hurt anyone, which was super funny because I remember playing a game with a buddy of mine where it was the two of us and I threw a couple of Sims in there. I think maybe like four or five, but they were all pacifist Sims. So there was a bunch of guys running around the map just smacking guns out of our hands and it was, you want to try, it's like, it's like if in... The good, the bad, and the ugly at the end. There was that three-way gunfight. And just as all three of them drew their guns, some guy just teleported behind them and slapped the gun out of their hand. And then they were like, all right. They went to pick it up again. They went to fire. And the guy just appeared and went, bah. And that just kept happening every single time they tried to shoot each other. That was the game. I don't even remember who won. And honestly, I don't care. Because the frustrating, repetitive, comedic timing of these bastards showing up and smacking guns out of our hands was just... Better than any victory we could have hoped for. But that was uh, that was one of my favorite games on the Nintendo 64 and still probably my favorite first-person shooter to date. Actually, no. No, it is my favorite first-person shooter to date. i got to come up with a list of like favorite games in different categories because there's just too many good games to say one was the best of all, with the exception of Red Dead Redemption, but I've been over that many, many, many times. But what about you guys? You guys got any games like that? Ones that really solidified themselves as being the best of the best in your mind. And of course, you know, technology will change, graphics will improve, gameplay, functionality, interactive, all kinds of stuff like that will improve games as they go on. But what one has cemented itself as being one of the best in your mind? Be interested to hear what you think, what you have to say, and why they were so special to you. Was it actually because they were like a great game like that? Did they do something that you haven't seen again before or since? Or maybe you don't see as often in games that come out today. Be interested to hear what your thoughts are. In the meantime, hope you guys have a great day. And as always, my name's Rye. You guys take care of yourselves.